We're living in a world where quick commerce is all prominent today and customer expectations are to get almost anything in minutes, if not seconds nowadays, right? And if you think about how organizations, the regulated industries still have to operate, that they still have to deal with, you know, provisioning of infrastructure, you know, a lot of time is taken away from true innovation that they could be spending time on. Uh, we talk to organizations all the time and, you know, cloud systems have been around for more than a decade now. And really it's allowed organizations to roll out new capabilities and not just capabilities, even new business models for that matter, very, very quickly. If, I have, if I'm a startup today and I have an idea in my mind, I can quickly roll out cloud infrastructure, implement that idea, get the world to adopt it very, very quickly. And in the world of AI that we operate in, this has become even more critical. However, in the, the environment that a lot of organizations which are in the, in the core regulated industries, they still have to deal with procurement cycles, they do, delivery cycles, they have to deal with software licensing issues, they have to deal with managing a lot of this mission critical infrastructure, depending on people with the right skills, that's not ever easy to find, right? The whole reason why public cloud became so popular, it was for things around simplicity. Think about the ability to predict how much cost I will have on my infrastructure for the next six months, next one year, even for the next one month, even for the next one week. It allows us to bring in that level of predictability. It's easier to learn. If I want to learn how to deploy things, it's fairly straightforward for me to spin up a VM, spin up resources, deploy my application and move on. Public cloud has allowed us essentially to be a lot more open, right? Uh, use open source, avoid lock-ins as much as, literally don't have lock-ins at all. Do things in minutes, as I was saying, ramp up, ramp down. Think about security, which is so critical when you're managing mission critical workloads. Think about scale, right? That allows us to bring intelligence at scale as well. All the data, the AI elements that allow us to make decision making. However, we know that not all workloads can move to the public cloud for various reasons. And you know, if you think about certain parts of the world, uh, in certain sectors, think about public sector organizations, think that or organizations that are in a highly regulated industry such as banking and telco, where data and workloads need to comply with regulations, require a private cloud deployment in their own data center. This is really to meet their very, very stringent regulatory needs that they have to deal with. There are various other factors that we believe are inhibiting move to the public cloud, right? Regulatory compliance is right up there. You know, when you think about sectors like defense, where information is highly sensitive or regulated, or what we call air gap, sovereignty becomes very, very important. The other key factor where we believe, you know, movement to the public cloud has, it may, may be difficult, is things around network survivability. What I mean by that is, you know, when you think about applications that are available, that are in the cloud, you have people who are, whether you're internal employees or your, your customers or your citizens that need access to it, they need to have ensure that the processing continues even if the network is down. So network survivability is important. The other area related to network is bandwidth, right? You might be able to connect, but the amount of information and data you're moving is so large, or in some cases noisy, it becomes very expensive and costly to move everything on, on, on one go, right? That, that's really important. And lastly, when you think about why you could you know, be inhibited from moving to the public cloud is on edge processing, on a real time basis, on device processing, right? When the decision time matters, your window of opportunity is so small and it requires a transaction to complete locally, an interaction to complete locally, right? All of these areas, while they're important, but what if I told you that you can do all of what the goodness of public cloud has to offer that caters to all the issues or challenges that I mentioned and can be addressed by having a public cloud in your data center, right? Which means you now have the ability to have location independent services, you build once and don't worry about where it gets deployed, whether it's on the public cloud or whether it's in the private cloud, right? Have that freedom. Think about cloud-like economics, which is essentially transitioning CapEx to pay as you go, or maybe even subscription, or maintain a CapEx model if that's what the business demands, but have that freedom of choice. If you have that ability, that's a great thing to do, right? or if you're able to modernize at your own pace, right? Rather than me saying that, hey, as a, as a cloud provider, please move to, a, to an environment that is best suited to run in a containerized example, for example, right? Can I bring containers to your data center? That is what we're trying to do, right? The overall evolution of the data enabled and cutting edge AI systems that exist today, a lot of them run in the public cloud because they need access to infrastructure, which is literally unlimited in a sense, right? They need access to data, 
which is available on a free flowing basis. If you're able to bring all of that and not be restrict by, restricted by where it should be running, it becomes much more easier from an overall organization point of view to run it where it is best suited for you, right? All of this, keeping in mind the regulatory compliance. So while we bring in all the capabilities, the flexibility to maintain compliance, maintain, con maintain the overall position for the, the element around what you want to run where is extremely critical. And that is what we're bringing with, with Google Distributed Cloud. Let me walk you through how this whole thing works. Let's start with the core. The base foundation, which is a core infrastructure, which is your, your processing power. So it starts with CPUs or GPUs, if that's what matters to you, with all the high-speed storage, right? So we start with the base layer, which is core compute power. On top of that, you need something to manage that compute, which is the host operating system. So we bring in an operating system that Google has engineered over a period of time that is able to work with the core infrastructure at the back. On the operating system, you need an environment to host your applications. And this is the whole, what we refer to as GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine, which has now been around for over, over 10 years. So it's fairly, very mature, and we're bringing the same elements onto the data center for you to work with. So you're allow, allowing you to host your applications in a containerized environment, but if you think your applications are not ready to be containerized, you could work in a work in a in a virtual machine as well, right? So we've got the third layer, which is which is from a containerized applications. Moving on to the data layer, every application has data, and it requires data to work with in an effective manner. This could be transactional data or analytical data for for either for your typical business intelligence type of applications, or even a feeding into to AI now. So data is critical, and there are various elements that Google has been working with to ensure that this works seamlessly. And think about what do you do with this data? One is, of course, as I was saying, you manage it in an environment that is most relevant to you, whether it's for transactional purposes or for analytical purposes. And AI becomes very critical here as well. So AI, when it comes to running large language models, something like Google's Gemma or open source LLMs, or an entire framework like Vertex AI that allows you to you know, essentially model your own environment in a, in a manner that's more suitable to you. So we cover AI as a layer there. And finally, security is extremely important. All of this, while it's managed in your environment, we need to have the ability for access control, identity management, the governance layer around it. All of that security and governance plays a role. When all of these different elements come together, you're really looking at a system that's capable of delivering the outcomes that you need. On top of that, you think about ISV applications or third-party applications, because we realize that organizations have to deal with software vendors that are very, very specific to their industries. And we want to make sure that we are compatible with a lot of these ISV providers. And then finally, the ability to monitor it in an effective manner. When you, when you put these systems together, there are two modes by which you can monitor this environment, depending upon you know, the industry, again, that you operate in, which allows you to either have a connected mode, which means GDC, Google Distributed Cloud as an environment, sits in your data center, but the management console sits on Google Cloud. That's the connected mode. There is also something called air gap mode, which means that you're not comfortable with even the console for management on the public cloud, where you have to be completely air gapped. And there are environments and there are instances where we believe this is relevant too. So that's another flexibility that we ensure that you have a completely air gap mode, right? All of this comes together and delivers, as I was saying, in a sovereign manner, in a manner that allows you to manage it effectively. Let's look at the key area elements of Google Distributed Cloud that I believe we believe that are very important uh, as you go about managing this on a day-to-day -day basis. The first key element is fleet management. What I mean by fleet management is essentially, as, as the system uh, evolves over a period of time, it scales. You can start with one, one simple, one rack to thousands of locations. You look, you look at monitoring clusters and applications. You think about patch management and vulnerability assessment. You think about the whole configuration management. Having the ability to do all of that in a, in a manner that's very, very effective is extremely important from a fleet management point of view. The second area is around the whole centralized or air gap, right? If you think about, do I still want to look at something that I want to manage from a, a Google Cloud Console that I was referring to earlier, or, or I want to run in a completely air gapped operational environment? Both are important and critical, but you have to think about things around ticketing, run books, the whole day two typical operations, right? Deployment, the whole infrastructure as a code tooling, how do I integrate with my existing 
uh, environment and systems is extremely critical as well and secure the traffic as well and control it in a manner that's most effective to you. So that's the second key area. Third is security. And I'll keep coming back to this because we believe security is extremely critical no matter where it is, whether it's on the public cloud or in your private cloud data center with a completely zero trust approach. And look at applying all of this across the different elements, across your network, your data, your applications, and also think about security operations, both at the hardware and software level. In, you know, taking into account the entire supply chain is extremely important. Security is critical. And last but not the least is AI. Right? We are doing all of these things. Of course, we have operational systems and transactional systems, but you do want to use the power of AI as it evolves over a period of time. So bringing in the Google data and AI expertise on premise, getting all the foundational and pre-trained models, think about data ops, think about ML ops, all of these areas are extremely relevant to you and you should not miss out on those just because you're moving to a private cloud environment. So all of this is extremely critical and I think this will help organizations evolve and keep pace with the others that are on public cloud today. So are you really keen to look at you know, whatever public cloud has to offer, whether it's about scale, speed, uh, the cost uh, management around all of the innovative capabilities that, that gets released nowadays in public cloud, uh, but not able to use it for various reasons that I was saying earlier? Guess what? Now it's possible, right? The ability to bring your well, goodness of public cloud through your private data center is now a reality, ensuring that organizations are able to leverage this in an effective manner. Excited to build what's next for your business? Think Google Cloud.